Oh, my two favorite numbers going on tonight. Episode number seven and Friday the 13th. <laughs> Absolutely perfect night to do this. Thank you everybody for tuning in. I'd like to say, hey, if you're liking what you hear, please go and tell your friends. Show them the Paranormal Planes podcast page there on Facebook. Have them like it. Have them send their stories in to me. Absolutely Thank you for sending the stories in that you have, and we've got some pretty cool stories tonight, and hoping here soon to get back with the 970 Paranormal Group there in Loveland, because uh, Brian's been in communication with me about a bunch of uh, evidence they got at the last place they were at, and those guys want to do a full group uh, interview. So that'll be exciting. It sounds like they've got a lot going on over there. So we'll start off tonight. And this is from Jeannie in Sioux Falls. Dear friend of mine, fellow musician. That's another thing we can do in this new studio here is jam. So hopefully we'll get some jam sessions for you guys to listen to sooner or later as well. But okay, and she wouldn't tell me if this was just a story she wrote because she is a writer or if it's an actual haunting thing that went on but, oh hey and as well uh, my studio down here also has a bed and oh, that's where my beautiful girlfriend's crashed right now and I don't know how good this microphone is but I've been hearing her snore through these headphones so if you hear a little noise in the background don't get scared it's just her She's not too scary. Unless she's really in a mood. <laughs> Love her to death. So she won't be reading any stories with me tonight because she's sleeping for work. Alright, here's a story from Jeannie. It was my first time alone in the old house. I wasn't afraid at all. Not in the beginning. I sought out old houses. The older and more remote, the more to my liking. If the door was unlocked, the steps in good repair, and no signs about warning not to trespass, I seldom hesitated. This old house called to me, beckoning me to come in from the afternoon. It was there doing what houses do, sheltering and breaking wind on the rainy chill of a long walk. I stepped through the door and closed it tight behind me. It smelled beautiful, damp but not moldy, like earth smell in the yard coming in the broken window panes. One window, not broken, seemed odd, out of character, and that's the one I stepped up to and looked out. It wasn't what I saw, it was what I heard. It wasn't the wind. We all know how an old building, whether a barn or house or a garage, can make a sound on a windy day. Well, that's not what I heard, folks. I swear to God, I heard that house singing. Not words. Nope. Not like a person singing. Uh-uh. No. It was a song with all the parts a song should have, right where the song should have them. I was momentarily dumbfounded, because I understood right away what I was hearing. I opened the window, which didn't want to open. I even poked my head out. It stopped for a brace of minutes. I thought I was mistaken and slowly pulled it shut when I heard it begin again, plain as day. Not near, not far. This old house was making music somehow. Not just music, but music shaped and formed into a song like a birdie sings. That kind of song, but it was no bird. I listened and listened and then it just quit singing. The song ended where a song should end. It was all quiet, but for the wind and rain. No more music. That's when I got goosebumps and the urge to run right the hell out of there. I tiptoed, real quiet, gentle, and slow. I opened and shut the big old door. 
I walked a few steps, then I started to run like the wind that was at my back. I ran a mile, I bet. I stopped to catch my breath. When I looked back, it was just an old house, not bothering anyone or doing any harm. Oh, I'd be back. I knew I'd be back. Thank you, Jeannie, for that amazing story. And I don't know if that's a fiction or a nonfiction, but I tell you what, I absolutely love to read more of your stories on the podcast. You're an amazing writer. I don't know, I could just I can I can hear a song coming out of that. You need to write a song too, and we'll sit down and jam to it. <laughs> I'm getting the real big urge to jam lately. Something that's just been I don't know. You'd go out and do the karaoke stuff and you know, it, it gives you a little fix, but you gotta really have the guitar in your hand and actually be singing to the instrument to really get that fix that you're looking for. Okay. Next story comes from Rose in Iowa. Last year, my mother was woken up in the middle of the night by the sound of someone climbing the steps in our hallway. The steps would make a creaking noise on the fifth step, and everyone knew not to step on it in the night if we were sneaking around. Well, she shot out of bed to see what was going on, but no one was on the steps. She went back to sleep until about a half hour later. She had this feeling of someone watching her. She once again shot out of bed to find a lady with dark hair pulled up into a bun on the top of her head. A black night dress on and a very young complexion staring at her face to face. Terrified that someone was in her room, she did pull back from the face, but as soon as she looked back to see who was standing there, my mom is used to seeing me, my brother, and my sister get up at night and go into her room, but it wasn't us that night. Once she realized that it wasn't us, she got out of bed and started searching the house for anyone who might be in the house. Now, it was winter, so you could see steps in the snow if someone had in fact broken into our house. So that was the first place she looked, and she didn't find any footprints in the snow at all. She kept this to herself until a week later, I confronted her with my own encounter. I hadn't slept that well the night I was supposed to be going to my dad's apartment for the day, so I was still groggy when it happened to me. I was lying in bed with my blankets pulled up over my face, but I was facing away from the wall so I could see if someone would move my blankets. My room was cold and I could hear what sounded like my mom getting ready to go to work in the bathroom that's right beside my room. I didn't think anything about it, so I pulled another blanket over my face, not wanting to get up to go anywhere that day. About two minutes later, I heard the bathroom light switch off, so I relaxed a bit and waited for mom to come wake me up so I could get ready, because I was being lazy. Almost as soon as I opened my eyes, halfway to peek around my blankets, I felt them being pulled down from my face and back to where they had been when I had gone to sleep. Not thinking much about it, I made a little squeak as the cold air hit my face. The house was colder than I remember it ever being that day. No sooner had my blankets stopped moving, a very, very cold hand touched the side of my face, and a voice cooed in my ear, and a very feminine voice that I realized later was not whom I thought it was. What a sleepy little girl, was what the voice said. And I remember growling at her as I moved my face away from her cold fingers and buried myself back into my blankets. I think I waited about ten minutes before I realized she wasn't going to make me get up. So I climbed out of bed and then got ready for the day. When the day was over, I remember going home with my mom and asking her what she was doing in my room that morning, and her telling me she hadn't been upstairs since she woke up. And it was true since she still wasn't dressed for work when I showed up downstairs dressed at 7, which was way earlier than it needed to be. I then told her a strange lady was in my room because someone touched my face and talked to me and that's when I found out what happened to her and we made the connection 
that the ladies we had seen were pretty much identical. Once I got over the face that it was my mother, because, to be quite honest, they look about the same. I find this all very strange, because it's the only time it's ever happened to me, and it's never happened again after. Could my mother and I be dreaming about what happened, or was it real? Well, I don't know, real or not, but I think that's one of the things that would make me absolutely have a heart attack on the spot, is to see someone when I wake up, like, in the bedroom. Especially a creepy thing like that, uh, I don't know. I, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't be living in that house very long. <laughs> Give me your thoughts on that one. Next is a short little story from Bo in Montana. When I was nine, we had Christmas at my grandma's. It was Christmas Eve and my mom, dad, and older brother went down the street to my aunt's house for a party. My grandma had put me and my little brother to bed in the middle bedroom of the single wide trailer. I hated this room and never slept in it. I always slept in the first room with my mom and dad. Well, me and my brother went to bed. A few hours later, my mom woke me up, and I was in a cold sweat. She took me into their first room and made a bed for me on the floor. She asked if I was okay, as I had been talking in my sleep. I told her that there was something in that room that didn't like me. Mom shook her head and told me it had just been a bad dream. Later that night, I was awakened by scratching on the door. When I opened my eyes, I saw the tall, pale man reaching out for me. I started to scream. I was scared. I woke up my mom, and she moved me to the other side of the bed away from the door. The next morning, we got dressed and had breakfast, then went to my aunt's house for exchanging of gifts and Christmas dinner. We went back home the next day. It was seven years later. I had found out a man lost his wife and daughter and he went crazy and killed himself in that room. Come to find out, I looked just like his daughter. Ooh, that was a short creepy story. Thank you for that one, Bo. Next is a story from Nebraska. This comes to us from Allie. Every house that I have lived in has been haunted. I've never really had any major issues before about a month ago. I have lived in the same house for about 11 years now, ever since I was 4 years old. This house is extremely haunted, and I'm afraid something is attacking me in my sleep. In January of this year, my dad started renovating the basement bathroom. My room is also in the basement. A few days after the renovation began, I had fallen asleep on the basement couch. I wasn't fully asleep, and all of a sudden my whole body began to tingle. I was paralyzed and I was fear fearful for my life. All of a sudden, I felt a hand wrap around my ankle and begin to pull. At this point, I was praying to wake up. Eventually, when I was halfway off the couch, I woke up. Next time I was at my dad's house, things got worse. The next time I experienced sleep paralysis. I was in the bedroom asleep on my side facing the bedroom door when I felt someone hit my face once, then twice, immediately after the second hit. My whole body began to tingle. Pain was surging through my face where I had gotten hit. The next thing I know, I was on my back with something sitting on my chest. I couldn't breathe. The pressure lifted off of my chest and it seemed as everything was quiet. With my body still tingling and being paralyzed, I felt an arm go underneath my waist and the hand clutch my other side. I tried my hardest to clutch my bed with my fingers to keep myself on the bed, but I couldn't move. The arm began to lift me off the bed and only parts of me touching the bed were the top of my head and the tips of my fingers and the tips of my toes. All of a sudden, it dropped me back on my bed. Ever since then, the sleep paralysis has become more frequent and more intense. I have no idea what to do. I hate sleeping now because of it. What do I do? Well, uh, my suggestion? 
Uh, tell your dad you need to move. Tell him what's going on. Well, okay, maybe you don't have to move. Maybe just go get a blessing on the house. Sometimes that works. Or stand up and say, hey, I am not going to take this. You don't live here. I do. This is my house, not yours. Stand up and be firm on your ground. Well, there's many different things that you can do to stop a haunting. Uh, sometimes it just... The people that used to live there that have passed on now thinking that people are invading their space and they just don't realize that, hey, it's not your home anymore. Uh, you've passed on and somebody else is living in your house. And they just need to be made aware of that and tell them, hey, you don't live here anymore. You're not even alive anymore. Go to the light. And sometimes that'll work for you. And if it doesn't, yeah, just move out. <laughs> That's my suggestion. You can try different things. It might work. Our next story comes from Michelle in Minnesota. My husband Bob and I had been married for two years when he was released from active duty in the Army. We moved to his hometown in Michigan and he tried to fit back in a civilian life after eight years in the military. However, Things did not go smoothly for us, and after a few months, I was in a downward spiral. I was extremely depressed, homesick, I came from Minnesota, and I was angry at Bob most of the time because he was drinking. He was not working, so we never had enough money for the bills. I was exhausted from working two full-time and sometimes three part-time jobs to pay bills and our money and spending it on alcohol. So I had a lot of negativity swirling around me, and suddenly, weird things started happening. It started with my husband tripping over things on the floor that weren't there, and falling. And this was when he wasn't drinking. Usually when he did this, we were fighting at the time. It gradually got worse to where he fell on the stairs one time. And then on Easter morning, 1989, he was helping me clean the house for his family to come over. He was bent over the tub scrubbing it, and as usual, we were arguing when I heard him scream. I went into the bathroom, and he was holding the back of his head with blood running down a huge cut on the back of it. Bob told me that he got hit by something really hard, but there was nothing laying on the floor or in the tub. There was nothing above his head, and we couldn't figure out what happened. So I started thinking the house had a ghost, because we found bones under the house in the crawl space when we were replacing the foundation. Didn't think too much more about it, and things kept happening to Bob for the next few months while we lived there, and Bob started calling me a witch. About six months later, we had moved to an apartment in Ohio because we could no longer afford to live in the house. I had to move somewhere less expensive and things kept happening there. I received a phone call from my doctor in November that year telling me that I may possibly have cancer and I needed further testing. After the phone call, I went back to sleep because I was working third shift and while asleep, Bob said the glass storage jars for my flour and sugar were thrown off the shelves across the kitchen and busted on the opposite walls. Also, a month after that, I was working at the Red Lobster and my manager yelled at me after I asked him a question and embarrassed me a bit and made me a little bit angry. Fifteen minutes later, he said he was trying to leave the kitchen with a full tray of food when he tipped over, tripped over nothing on the floor and fell flat on his face. I had witnesses that said I was on the other side of the kitchen, but there were also witnesses that said they saw me trip him. Over the next 20 years, Bob and I moved from apartment in Toledo, Ohio, to a house in Delta, Ohio, to a duplex in Adrian, Michigan, to an apartment in Champlain, Minnesota. Or, nope, be Champlain, Minnesota, it looks like and then to a townhouse in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Over those years, things kept on happening until 1995. One night, 
I was at the top of the townhouse thinking that it would be delicious for pizza for dinner. I really wanted some pizza, but I was too lazy to go downstairs and tell my husband. About an hour later, I went downstairs and Bob was making pizza, and I told him that is exactly what I wanted. He told me I had told him 30 minutes before when I was standing at the top of the basement stairs and told him pizza would be good for dinner. He told me he saw my legs and heard me tell him, and yet I had never moved. Over the last 10 years, we have moved from that townhouse to a single family home in Brooklyn Park, and things continue to happen. Whatever is here is terrifying one of my dogs, Dakota, a husky shepherd mix, who ran into the bathroom one night about 2 a.m., jumped on the bed, and refused to look at the bedroom door, shaking really badly. After a few minutes, I said out loudly, they need to stop scaring my dog because I need to sleep to go to work in the morning. Bob was in Iraq at the time. A couple of minutes later, Dakota laid down and went to sleep. That happened many times. Now, whatever is here knocked on my parents' bedroom door early in the morning to wake them up. Knocks on the inside of my closet door at midnight for 30 minutes straight, about two weeks at a time has growled on the other side of the bathroom door in the middle of the night, has made coughing sounds that are just like my husband's in the family room in the middle of the night when he has been in bed with me. We even see the knob on the stereo turn up by itself. Things disappear and reappear. Things are moved around, etc. I also see a shadowy figure in my bedroom and bathroom quite often. And sometimes he does try to scare me. I just have to tell him to stop. So I'm wondering if I created something way back when we lived in Ohio when I had all the negativity in my life and had it follow me from place to place. I just don't see how all of the places I have lived could be haunted. My current home is only 40 years old and we are the second owners of the house. If it is something I created and it has followed me, how do I unmake it? Well, that does sound kind of dead on there. Just like usually it is a person that's in their preteen or teen years that uh, usually create the poltergeist. But I suppose if you had a strong enough uh, willpower, you could create one at any age uh, your anger and frustrations and stress and everything you know just come to manifest outside of your body and it creates some pretty crazy crap so yeah um i would try i would say to be i don't know happier more relaxed person uh you seem to be able to control it by telling it, you know, to stop scaring the dogs and stuff. So I think you do show some control over it. Uh, sit down and maybe say, hey, I'm absolutely done with this stuff. I want this to no longer happen. You know, and say, hey, whoever it is or whatever it is, I no longer want this to happen. And you need to move on and go find somebody else to haunt I don't know just kind of tell it you're a boss and tell it to go away but yeah it could be a spirit that attached to you back then when you had all the negative stressed out energy and it built itself on that and it's actually followed you or it could be like you said you know something you created yourself and I think you're the only one that could stand up to it and stop it so there's ways out there to uh, get rid of stuff like that do some research up on it and I don't know, just kind of keep on telling you you know you're the boss and you want it to stop all right our next story comes from Jake and he is also from Minnesota 
This happened to me when I was little, like three or four years old. I swear on my life this is true. When I was little, I used to see this ghost in my room. She was an old woman, and she always stood in the corner at night. All you could see was her head and shoulders. When my mom was putting me to sleep, she would watch us and smile. After my mom left the room, that's when things got started. At first, she just stood there and smiled at me. Not in a creepy way, but in a gentle kind of way. Like how a mother smiles at her baby. She always made me feel safe. After a while, she started to talk to me. She would repeatedly tell me that she was there to protect me every night. The scary thing is she said she was protecting me from demons who were trying to get me for something I did in my past life. I'm not making this up. Just thinking about this makes me shiver. But when I was little and hearing this, I felt safe and she made me feel calm. Soon after, she started telling me other things. She would tell me how ghosts can die too and the afterlife. This is the interesting part. She said that people become ghosts and when their time comes, they vanish, hence dying, or most common, they vanish into a bright doorway and never come back. And lastly, their spiritual er energy comes a part of another being, reincarnation. Of course, at that age, I didn't understand what she was talking about and she would tell me as I got older and I would understand. A while after she appeared, she started becoming paranoid, like telling me she was protecting me. When this started happening, small shadows of people were holding hands and dancing at the top of my walls. I had a nightlight and they were small figures that moved around in circles parallel to the floor. They would dance for hours. The woman said as I got older I would be able to protect myself and she would have to go as her time was going to come soon. For a long time I didn't see her and the figures disappeared after a while. A long time later I woke up late at night. I was wide awake and I noticed my room was really bright. I looked around me and all of my blankets were rolled up and pulled around me in a circle. This is the scariest thing that has ever happened to me. At the end of my bed, a tall bluish greenish figure was at the end of my bed reaching for me. I turned to my side and kicked him. When my heel touched him, I felt him turn. He felt warm like a soft energy, like when you quickly put your hand through fire. As soon as I kicked him, I heard a very soft thud as he stepped back. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw him walk through my window and through the wall, and window not moving to go through, just walking through it. As he passed the window, the curtains blew around him as if there were a heavy wind, despite my windows being closed. The room dimmed after he left. When I got the courage to turn back, I was facing my wall. I turned on the lights, and in my carpet there was a footprint where he had walked. There were no toes. It just came to a point, and the curtains were still moving. In the morning, my heel felt tingly, and the blankets were still rolled up. I checked the windows, and they were closed and locked. The footprints were barely visible. I wanted to tell my mom, but I knew she wouldn't believe it. Plus. I didn't know how to explain it. After that, I didn't see the woman or the shadow figures for a long time. Fast forward about a year, I'm about five at the time, and I'm in my basement. I get the same feeling I got when the woman was around, so I look around and notice a nail on the wall. It was spinning slowly and coming out. It stops, the shadow moves and gets longer. I looked over and she was looking at me and she said, it's my time, my time is here. And she vanished, I remember feeling sad. Since then, I've seen very little ghost activity. 
the only one after that was in second grade. I saw a pale man with a long coat and a hat tap the person sitting next to me on the shoulder. She turned around and freaked out, asking who did that. Nobody saw anything, and she said the person's finger was cold. I also swear my house is haunted. All my friends ask who they see walking past me or who they are hearing when it's just me and them, especially when we video chat. I don't see or hear anything. My dogs will also perk up their ears and look at different places in the house as if somebody was there. I'm not making this up. If you choose not to believe this, it's up to you. Also, I am adopted and don't have contact with my birth family to see if this is a ghost relative. She's not a relative of my adopted family. I've seen the pictures and we don't have many dead relatives. I've tried searching the web to find the blue ghost or find anybody or find if anybody has had the same experience as me. I did tell my mom about the experiences years later and she didn't believe me. Also, we're not that religious of a family, but I firmly believe in the supernatural. I've told my friends about this, and even some of my most skeptic friends believe me. If any of you had an experience like this, please share. Also, if you know what ghost or spirit I saw, tell me. I need to know. Like I said earlier, I'm not making any of this up. Well, it sounds like one of them, like the lady was definitely a protective spirit. The others, I don't know. Uh, it sounds like it could be anything from a shadow person to, well, a visitation from an alien. I mean, it sounds like it coming in through the window and going out through the window. And I don't know, it just uh, kind of seems like you might have more than one thing going on there. I'm not for sure. But I'll tell you what, guys, I'm going to wrap this up at about uh, a half hour here, about 32 minutes into it. Send in your stories so we can get the next podcast rolling. Thank you for the people that have submitted your stories so far. And like I have mentioned a million times, and I'll mention it again, let's uh, get over to the Paranormal Planes podcast page there on Facebook and copy the link and share it on your page. Tell your friends about it. Looking for any of the stories from anywhere in the Great Plains, Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, Montana, Colorado, anywhere that's the Great Plains. Let's get your stories in here. We want to hear them. Uh, Anything, ghosts, cryptids, aliens, Bigfoot, anything. Absolutely love Bigfoot stories. If you got a good one of those, I want to know about it because we'll actually come check out your area if it's not too far away. I still want to do some squatching. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for the night. Happy Friday the 13th, and we will catch you soon. Thank you. Have a great one.